How you doing everybody? Randy Richard in the shop. This is the morning before we leave, the day before we leave for our trip to the Midwest. Beautiful morning. It's cooling off a bit and uh, we're gonna miss some cool weather the way it sounds. Anyway, we got the, I, I got the, the gravel done <laughs> behind the shop here. Uh, that came the other day and I got it all spread out. And uh, the generator came yesterday morning, so I got it set in place. Not hooked up yet, but we'll do that when we get back. No time right now. But this came out really nice uh, spot back here in the corner. And uh, we'll have a lot of parking area. We're gonna, I'll move the uh, travel trailer up here today. And uh, I might park the Jeep up here, as you can see my Jeep over here. It needs some work, but it's down there. And... Uh, We'll uh, have plenty of parking space behind the shop here. Also, uh, go to the shop here and I'm gonna show you a couple um, new indexing things I, I came up with for making dovetail cutters. Uh, the, since the last batch was such so many of them, uh, I had to come up with something to try to speed up the process. And so I think they're pretty good. We'll go in the shop here and take a look. Now I've shown before, the uh, fixture plate I made to hold the indexer, the 5C call it indexer here, uh, so it's at 30 degrees. So I, I can just bolt that down. So that was one big indexing uh, uh, improvement. Then I'm using a 5C call it closer uh, and indexer. We don't have to turn it, we just in one position, but it's a very rigid fixture and holds a dovetail cutter quite well. You know, in there like that. Now I used, I was using the collet with a stop in it, and I would always put it into the stop and boom, lock it in. Well, they're not always exactly the same length, so if by doing it this way, it was difficult. I couldn't use the DRO features of saving locations because if you move this in and out, that location changes. So I came up with this little jig right here. This is cut with a dovetail in it for the cutter, just like that. And so what that allows me to do is it, it goes flush on the end like that and then butts up against the collet here like that and allows me to index the distance that the dovetail cutter is in in relationship to the end of the head uh, the same every time. Just like that, you know, pop it in there, put it in, push it in, and lock it. And now this is the same, has the same position outside of the collet every time. So now I can memorize. So the first one I do, I do carefully and save my location of how far in I want to mill and the location of where the hole is, ends up being. And then I'm good to go for however many I'm going to do until of course I move uh, the indexing head or something like that. So the first one I always have to do that to take the time to set the points. And this is set up for the large ones on one side and flip it over here is the, the small ones on the other side. So this was a little bit of a trick to make. Uh, if, you know, think of this, this is a round piece of Delrin and you, you, you know, very difficult to go in and try to bore that hole. Uh, so what I did is I drilled a hole, I drilled two, two holes to, and then bored the size to, you know, made sure this was the, the size I needed for the shafts, you know, it's to be, uh, five eighths of an inch on one side, half inch on the other. So a nice exact hole. And then I milled away this, and then I took a dovetail cutter and ran it right in there like that to cut that to cut that uh, dovetail in there. That worked out actually really, really well for this. And uh, I used this on all the, this last batch of a hundred something dovetail cutters and uh, it worked extremely well. It sped up my time tremendously uh, on how many measurements I have to make using the DRO and uh, just, just uh, it cut it down to about, oh, five minutes uh for the whole process 
from put time I put this in to probably next put the next one in five minutes cycle time, uh, and for, for for what I was doing before with having to measure every time and and position that hole new every time, uh, this this was a huge improvement. Indexing always will help you, especially if you have to do more than a few parts. Uh, so this is this was one indexing thing. One thing that comes up in, in making the dovetail cutters is since I'm hand turning all these. I uh, usually don't have any problems with the heads. Uh, they 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 can be, you know, shoot, <laughs> about you know, plus or minus five on the diameter. Really, uh, is about the limit I absolutely go to. But usually, I'm within a two, uh, without a problem on the diameter of the head. Uh, but because what happens if if you get this too small? The head, the insert will be up here into the shank. And I want to keep the shank as large as possible. That's why I chose 5 eighths really works well uh, on the shank. Uh, you know, the heavier shank you have, the more rigidity in the whole tool. And I think that's one reason why the tool does work uh, as well as it does. Is It's a nice big shank all the way down into the head. Uh, some of these you can buy smaller shanks and then they root or... or Maybe it has a big shank, but they reduce the the diameter here and, and into this. And now that causes other than stress problems, but you don't have that solid rigidity into the head. You know, you, you've reduced the shank, and so actually the head could move a little uh, under forces. But here, being solid, it's, 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 it's a way better setup. But anyway, if you get this, so if you get this too small, the insert ends up getting into the shank. That's why... Uh, and if it's too big, it, you're just making it larger. Now you have a trouble getting into spaces where you want to get it into. So uh, that's where I, I came up with about the optimum for this size cutter, for each of the cutters, of, of what head size you can, the smallest you can make it, and not too big type of thing. But anyway, um, every once in a while, I'll be out of spec too big on a shank. If I go under on a shank, I'll make some 9 16 ones. Or I'll even turn it down to a fin muscle, turn it down to a half and make a small one uh, type out of it. But if I'm over uh, too much, uh, if I'm over by two thousands, uh, then it's too much. Uh, I don't mind being over a, a one thousandths, but if it's over two, then then you can't get it. You can't get it in your collets and you won't put it. It's just too much uh it won't close right and things like that you I mean the optimal is probably having a half thousandths under uh or so uh, half thousandths to one under and you could get it in uh, uh, end mill holders and things like that but i you know me working on a lathe get uh, trying to work within a half a thousand tolerance is, is uh, extremely difficult let me put it that way Anyway, so I had some that were a little on the big side, about six or so. I wanted to come up with a way I could fix those up. Well, so this is what I came up with right here. And uh, this uh, clamps together and holds that in there nice and tight. And then I take this and clamp this in the six jaw. This worked... Uh, uh, far better than I, I expected it to work. Uh, I but to make this, I couldn't just run the cutter in there and cut that. I had to make this round. What you know, this is this is aluminum, and I also figured I made a drawing, so I figured out how much I was going to take out of the center here to maintain this being round and and all that stuff, and and uh, how much I needed to take out so I could hold this and. Anyway, so I, I ended up having to come in through the hole here and bore that dovetail cutter, dovetail hole. And then uh, I kind of did it by numbers. It, it was very difficult to get in there and try to measure that or anything. It was a really, uh, this was a this was a difficult thing to make on, on a manual machine. A CNC machine, I don't think that'd be too hard. But on a, million, on a manual lay, very difficult to figure out the size of that hole but anyway it came out uh you know then i cut it in half and then i milled it to what i wanted to 
here so when you clamp this this is round or fairly round but that goes in there that goes in there and uh, this just worked uh, and this clamps up there very tight and it's very concentric when I put it in so I can uh, do some emery work on it and uh, fix it up so uh, the other day uh, uh, my son and I we made a, a gas cap for his uh, well it's going to be his race truck uh, the way he's building it I think he's going to race it so he needed a he built the, the filler pipe and uh, for the fuel cell and and all that and uh, it's all stainless and uh, he needed the end cap for the filler pipe well he's got two and a half inch tube for the for the uh, filler and all the ones you could buy that are pre-made goes in there and weld in are fairly small uh the hole size is only about an inch and a quarter it wasn't even well an inch and a half or something so he wanted something bigger so he, uh, it's, you know makes it a little easier to get in and all that so anyway so i designed one up and uh we we built it the it was a slip-in piece into the tube a stain out of stainless uh six we used uh six uh, tpi thread and uh that would be welded in and then this aluminum cap uh nice big cap about three uh, roughly about three a little over three inches in diameter and uh spins in there easy with the o-ring seal and and all that but we wanted to dress it up and so we we uh we came up with we were going to put a brass input uh something on the on the cap uh so i i i made all the cap and we did all that the other day and so i finally had, i did have time to i had some big brass it's about two and a half inches and uh we we uh, we're going to screw this in a, this has a half 20 thread on the back and and uh we pulled both logos on here uh, basic biker that's what he goes by and uh our r in the shop with the gear and uh very uh, this came out really nice uh he's gonna like this <laughs> he doesn't have it yet he, i think he saw a picture on instagram but uh yeah this this came out good we're just, we'll you know put that on the top of the cap maybe mount it on the lock tight it in on top of the cap uh it would be pretty some pretty flashy there anyway so we liked it i just thought i'd show you real quick